Oliver Marat kicking us off. How will Whitney Asigwe handle that situation? We know Malakar is an experienced mixed doubles player, Wimbledon champ. Asigwe is a really big talent from the United States. She just won the Junior Nationals to get a wild card here in the United in the U.S. Open. She got a lot of attention from the tennis world. Look at that smile. Reminds <laughs> me of a young Sloane Stephens. Yeah who did really well here as a young player in mixed doubles. If I remember correctly, she either won the mixed doubles with Jack Sock. Does that sound about right? No, that's... Melanie that's Dan. Giddy up yeah. and go, yeah. I just remember but, young Americans. Sloan's American. played some mixed doubles yeah. in her day, yes, for sure. I just think this is just the happy side of the, of the sport. The happy, you know, the doubles and the singles is so serious. You'll see more smiles in mixed doubles than it, in any other event. Really cool to see the four majors and the Olympics include mixed doubles. I think it's going to be a relaxed approach today for a Segway and a Tiafo. Maybe a little bit more serious for Melikar and Marak. The difference is, is that this team right here, this is 15, their living. Yeah. These are their due for a living. The other side, you know, these guys here, Tiafo, singles is his bag, right? This is like a one-up. Look at him smile. He's not looking at the court. He's looking at the stands. <laughs> it's going to be great experience for his doubles. But this is a great way for these young talents just to get more reps on these U.S. Open grounds. Nice serve there from Morak. First Think base of the match. John McEnroe won his very first Grand Slam. French Open mixed doubles with Mary Carrillo. Really? Yeah, 1979. Oh. So... He was playing the junior event. He and Creel will get in, and they win. I like that little early stat coming in hot. That's wow. Giddy up and go. Called in. Yeah. <laughs> but see, that is, look at the nails. Can I say fashion game? <laughs> Two thumbs up. Full aces. Whitney's family court side. Again, her dad is a coach at the IMG Academy. Here's a break point on the Maroc serve. Yeah, big okay. time. So the Americans, a couple first sizzling return winners, and they've got a break. When you play with nothing to lose, you can just kind of tee it up and go for it. See the reach, short backswing, good timing. Little, yeah, behind the back high five. Back five, yeah. <laughs> the best thing to do is honestly listen to the little communications between both teams and how they kind of, in this case, just keep their partners loose, and that's both ways. I mean, I always felt, you know, I played with the Mary Pierces and the Davenports and the Jennifer Capriales. The they, big hitters. The big hitters, but they were having so much fun. It was it was just one of these things. Oh, it looks like rain. Scott Elvin out of the chair, it's checking. It's mm. You know, there's just some moisture moving through the area. The roofs are closed in both Ash and in Louis Armstrong, so. That's why they didn't want to bring him out right away yeah. after the previous match. Here we go, that wasn't too bad. So it is a break in hand for Asigwe and Francis Tiafo. Oh, how yeah. about that? Yeah, it's Melikar is going right at Tiafo. Both of those players played for my brother's world team tennis team, the Washington Castles. And so they're very familiar with one another. You see Tiafo again, staying away from the ATB player just to attack Melikar. Melikar, look at it, completely up for the challenge, but it's too much Tiafo. Great hands from Francis there. Just wide on that one. See, if I was, I was working Tiafo, this is where I'd make him serve in volley, first and second serve. I mean, serving and staying back, and that's okay, but this is where you can develop other aspects of your game. And because it's honestly something that you're just getting experience from and having a good time with it, work on your game. Get something out of it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Asigwe ducking down there. She almost crept 30, over 15. the net. She almost hit the net. Yeah, remember, you can go over, you just can't touch it. Right. You can't hit on the other side. You can follow through over it. And the umpire would have been right on it. Mm -hmm. I like that point you make, though, of Tiafo trying the serve and volley. It doesn't look like that's in the game plan, but maybe he'll sneak in a few. But I will say, I don't, I don't like the word try because then you're really kind of not committed to it. If I'm coaching him, I say, okay, dude, we have mixed doubles here. We want to win, but I'd rather have a win based on we're working on something, working on other aspects under competitive uh, situations. Yep. And let's just do it, force him to do it. See, that is outstanding. Quick hands. Tiafo looked like he went to grab a burger. He was off the court, <laughs> leaving his partner high and dry. But look at how the youngster deals with this. Look at the shift right here. Covers the middle, and the ball goes right to her because of a good shift. Good hand. I mean, great speed yeah. from Francis, but good hands and court awareness, as you're mentioning, from a Segue. So in the mixed doubles, it is a no ad scoring system. And when the men are serving, they serve to each other. Deuce. So gender to gender. Yep. yep, gender to gender. Here's the thing, that would not have helped in my, because <laughs> Capriati returned a lot better than I did. Yeah. A lot better. Lots of firepower, <laughs> yeah. of both wings. So I would love to see the genders, you know, be able to battle just normally. Game. Oh, nice try on the Tifo. lob from Melikar. It's just long, though. So 2-0 for Asigwe and Tiafo. They're loose. They're having fun. They're taking Asigwe, advantage Tifo. of games, all 12. the, you know, the First. rain delays, all this stuff where the other side, who are the favorites as the number two seeds, they're playing with more pressure on. They're playing definitely as the team that feels they have to win. Love. Yeah, nice stuff there. Well, Melikar has that ability to just take over a match with her serve, and that's, you'll see, very athletic. Tall. Yep. She clearly watched a lot of Sharapova when she was coming up, because you see that giant first and second serve. That has always set her love. apart through the juniors, through the, the, you know, the smaller tournaments, and now where she's really one of the better doubles players in the world on the WTA Tour. Malakar, 25. I mentioned the mixed doubles title at Wimbledon. Oh, nice return. Good hands from Tiafo. She also was a runner-up in the doubles alongside Peshki at Wimbledon. And she and Kaveta Peshki won in Prague earlier this season. Double specialist through and through. Forty thirty. Just wide there, still game point. There's Peshki. She's a slam winner. Been a part of a couple Fed Cup winning teams for Czech Republic. 43 years young for Kaveta Peshki. Tiafo attacks that one, but it's just wide, and Melikar, Marak, they're on the board. It's two on the Americans with an early break here. It's mixed doubles. We're having some fun. Day five of the U.S. Open. Whitney Asigwe earned her way into the women's draw this year by being junior national champion in the U.S. Oh. 
Love 15. This is where the American team have to really kind of watch it because this is the this is where a lot of the inexperience will kind of creep in. Got a little lead, one break, but can evaporate quickly against the number two seeds. So Tiafo has to take a leadership role and support his partner. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Maroc. As we mentioned, makes a living playing doubles, finds the Love early gap. But tactical mistake right here. Tiafo not telling his partner to take this second shot here and go down the line or lob down the line. Do not get an exchange with an ATP player. I mean, it just, again, you have to be communicating that. Okay, what are we trying to do here? How are we going to try to win this, this match? 15, you can't 30. think of this as a normal gender doubles competition where you're just looking for the right shot. Just because of the pace and the weight of the ball. Strength is just, it, mm. again, it's, it's based on strength. The men will just produce so much more power at the point of contact. And again, it's nothing against the WTA yep. player. I'm yep. just keeping it real. Right. When you're out there and you're playing the win, you will attack that the player doesn't serve as big, doesn't hit the ground strokes as big, even though the women hit the ball oh, massively. Yeah. Sure. You're talking tactically here, 30 all, a segue. <laughs> and that's a good example, but Tiafo needs to play more doubles and play these situations because you're going to get that in singles. You're going to be right on top of that net. And you want to be able to have the confidence to put that weight, that shot away all the time. Game. Okay, that there's the counter to that. Yeah, yeah. It was a deep shot. Two games all, first side. And then look at Malikar just takes care of business. So I do like, so you did get out of the one situation. You go the other direction, it burns you. So now it creates another set of problems. And here's your usopen.org. Let's talk about merchandise. Yeah, oh, merchandise, of course. You can go to usopenshop.org. It's the official shop for the 2018 merchandise here at the US Open. Choose from the largest selections of caps, tees, towels, outerwear, and collectibles. It is usopenshop.org. Really cool new stuff with the new US Open logo this year. Luke has spent hours on usopenshop.org. I'm telling you, you a replica trophy keychain. I'm telling you, for 12 <laughs> bucks. That thing's cool. That's what I'm saying. That and thing it's heavy, it's big. not like a piece of plastic. Very cool. This is a stocking stuffer. Oh for yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think it will get that far down the road, but it will be. Uh, it's a great tournament. They do such a great job of merchandising. The food has been fantastic. Let's such good food this year. Second sir. More and more each year. I feel like I'm I'm in Manhattan and I've got options here at Flushing. New York food. Best food city in the world. Now that we're neighbors, you're in Harlem. Yes. I'm in Forest Hills, yes. New York neighbors. We're you got to come up to Red Rooster in Absolutely. Harlem. Absolutely. You were I'll telling me about uh, Dino Barbecue. Dinosaur Barbecue in I Harlem. I been there. Started in Syracuse, New York. I spent some time up there, and it was some good eats. Packed on some pounds. <laughs> so this is really good for Malachi because she's been the one. She was so focused, came out of that rain delay firing. Wow. <laughs> Stay out of the way of that. Firepower. 30, Don't have a gun on that, but maybe triple digits off the Tiafo forehand. Watch him line this up. <laughs> Nasty. That was a great camera angle, too, to be right on line with that ball. Touch. 
You know, Segway was not ready for that one. Again, rack it up. You have to understand, Melikar is going to poach a lot. Whenever she has the opportunity off an aggressive shot from her partner, she's going to look to get in front of the ball. Watch her. See how she's kind of roaming right there in the middle? Her partner avoids her, and then all of a sudden she can put the ball away. Look at the intensity. Went for that one, just yeah. missed it. But I that's her role. Her. Yeah, she she breaks to her left, and all of a sudden she has to stop, put on the brakes, and come back for it. But again, a disruptive nut player is tough to play against because they're not predictable. It's a great formation for it. Look, it's a great example of how to be ready at the net. There it is. We're just a little early on the graphic, but it is 3-2 for the number two seeds, Malakar and Murak. Early goings here, mixed doubles action at the U.S. Open. Always fun when word spreads around the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. People getting word of this match. A couple Americans in action. Three, actually. There's Nicole Malakar. She's a Wimbledon champ in mixed doubles. Francis Tiafo with the serve. Nice stroke there from Oliver Murak. You can just see in these early goings, too, that the communication between Asigwe and Tiafo not quite up to snuff. Let first. This is where Tiafo really has to show that leadership as the power player on that team. The older player on the team, the guy has to kind of right the ship. Again, in the end, no matter you're playing for your living, like the number two seeds, or like the young Americans, you're playing for experience. You're playing to win. And how you navigate these situations will help you down the road. Wow. 15, <laughs> Hello. See, and there's Malakar with the smile. I mean, again, she's starting to feel it, getting herself engaged in this match after being down early, but this short backswing and lines it up. This is a premeditated shot down the line. You don't wait till that big bomb is coming after you before you hit it. Wow, down the middle too. And Melikar spent a lot of the summer on the Washington Castles with your brother as coach. And those were learning experiences for her, too. Because Massive, yeah. I was at a few of those matches. She played great some matches. She played pretty bad some matches, too. It's a different kind of pressure. And the format makes it so much faster. So she had to kind of get up to speed, even though she played as a youngster while she was a junior. The difference was when she was a junior, Melikar wasn't really expected to do much but get the experience 30, on, on the World Team Tennis um, season. Now, coming in as a Wimbledon champion, Wimbledon finals, I mean, coming right off the plane, like, you're here to produce. Yeah. Like, we want to win. That's yeah. what we're paying you for. Right. I think it was, a, it was tough. Like you said, there were patches of brilliance, but Deuce. there was a learning curve, too. And it, it's just going to make her more explosive. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another deciding point on the Tiafo serve. Backhand into the net for Morak and Melikar Morak challenging here. call on the right baseline. Ball. Well, challenge seems little. like a late challenge. I don't know about that, but we'll take it. The chase review here coming up. This is a challenge on a ball that was called in. Yeah, easily in. How'd you like Hawkeye Live? I liked it. You mean Game. from World Team Tennis? Yeah. It was strange. First set. I wasn't quite sure exactly how it worked. But um, yeah, I thought it was awesome. It's happening. It's the future. I mean, it's it makes it so streamlined. There's no time delay to challenge or not challenge. Just get on with it. Hawkeye technology used calling the lines live. There's a chair umpire. There's a couple review officials used in the ATP Next Gen Finals last year in Milan, used at the World Team Tennis season this year. Oh! 
30, love. It's just really apparent to Luke early on here. I mean, we're into game seven now, but there's a strategy for Melikar and Maraca, and there's there's good tennis being played by Esuigwe and Tiafo, but not as much of a ABC. It's a little loose on the other side. What I mean by that is the team chemistry looks like nice high fives, nice smiles, but I never get a sense that there's really some strategy going on between the two, whereas on the other side, the number two seats clearly have a plan before every serve, before every return, and these two are just playing basically two sing as singles players on the doubles court, just ripping shots, making plays. Pretty good singles players too, but you can see there Marak calling out where he wants this ball to go for Malakar. 30 old. Wanted it wide, too wide. So what happens here is the server tells the net player, this is where I'm going to serve and this is what I want you to do off the serve. I want you to poach, stay, fake, maybe a little shake and bake. 40, 30. And that plan just sets up the rest of the point if executed properly. You see the best doubles teams in the world consulting one another before. Game. That is a perfectly executed change, plan please. there, and it's 4-3. We're going to get Another new balls game. when we come back. Some mixed doubles as evening Just approaches first. here. It's a beautiful Friday night, Labor Day weekend in NYC. Let me see with balls. the new balls here. I really like Osigwe, and we talked love. about this off air about what you know. What kind of player can she become? You know, what's the style? And my thing is, is that she has to develop a really strong mind. If she has a strong mind out there, she's got enough firepower. Thirty love to go beyond the the Halops, to go beyond the Wozniakis that are you know, consistent top ten, top five players in the world. And then she's got a, you know enough you know, physically speed-wise to run around the court. But she's got to develop the mind as the weapon. And what does that mean? Tactically, she's got to be smarter, have different layers of her tactical approach. Talked again off air, like even on air with Tiafo. Like throwing some serve and volley. This is where you work on those types of things in case you need it. If you're getting slaughtered by a Serena Williams and you're and on your A game, what are the other layers of exactly yep. Yep. And C and Z and double A and game? Let's see, Gwen. Tifa. Well, how about that? A hold it, love. No, you're making such a good point because she's 16, a Sigue, and listen, she might grow a little Four bit more, but she's five foot six. Seven. She's got a build that's like a Halep maybe like a Kerber a little bit if she adds some more muscle to her, but she's not gonna be a Davenport, a Pierce, a Capriati, a Serena, or a Venus. And so now you've gotta figure out how do I navigate playing the biggest and the best on the WTA Tour? I don't know if you would agree with this, but when I see her, I see a Monica Puig, a package filled with strength, that can really drive shots, can do different things. I mean, Monica Puig winning the gold medal down in Brazil, but it's really not followed that up, all that success, parlayed it into a lot of dollars and endorsement sure. and fame and fortunate, but no one puts her in the top 10 of players that threaten for a Grand Slam title. Puig's really chosen to be that player that goes after every ball, sort of like a Sabalenka. Short, not, uh, yeah. not necessarily the consistency of a Halep or a Kerber. 30, love. But that's where the mind comes in. You have to be smart, you gotta be tough, and at 16, if this is the life you've chosen,
telling you, you've got a long life in front of you. You better like what you do. Yeah, nice Sorry, stuff there from Oliver Maroc showing why he's a And I want to tie a, a bow on that whole process. You notice I used the word like. Because you don't have to love the sport. It doesn't have to be your calling. But, man, the weeks get long. The losses get piling up. If you don't like what you do, Game. you're going to burn out. Yeah, Seagway's got to. She'll figure that out eventually. We hope she's just 16. But good points made as to what her career holds here. 4-5, early going in this mixed doubles match. Can they serve a stay in it? We'll find out. It's been a cloudy kind of day in New York, but myself included, a lot of people welcomed the clouds. New York exhaled today after three days of stifling heat. Francis Tiafo lost in that heat yesterday to Alex Di Minore in four sets and singles. Oh, that's nice from a Segway. And you know, Luke, you're making the point on a Segway that she <laughs> She's got to kind of figure out, we see her little sister Victoria there, what sort of player or person or professional she wants to be. She's got great hands, too. She's got it all. I mean, she's got the hands. She's got the physical skills. She's got a really high tennis IQ. But remember, these are all just steps as a 16-year-old. It's building that mind as her weapon that encompasses the social aspect, the, you know, how do you deal with getting to the airport? How do you deal with the, I mean, all of that stuff Let's that goes into being a world traveler, getting your visa. What do you do with extra bag, this and that? Mom and dad can't be there all the time. And I'll add this, the relationships you build in that locker room, the really relationships you build in the player's lounge will carry you for the rest of your career. If you have bad relationships, it's a tough life, and you've got to find the people that want to work with you, want to practice with you, want to go out to dinner with you, or you don't, and it becomes really lonely. Wonderful, wonderful combination. You can see Melikar just putting the overhead away, but watch how the teams are attacking. The teams that get into the net first usually dominate the point. If you're running around the baseline, you can hit a couple of shots back there, but it's a purpose to get forward. 40, That's a nice serve, especially at 30 all here, a little. But it's dangerous because we've seen Melikar rip some big returns yeah. off of that wing. If that ball doesn't break just right and flattens out, it goes right into the strike zone of that Wimbledon champion. That was a slider with interest at 114. Excuse me, 97 was that last serve. That one at 113. Second serve. Ooh, you talked about her hands. And Asigwe's played a lot of, you know, junior Fed Cup team events. You know, spends a lot of time at the IMG Academy, obviously. She's played in different formats. Impressed with her composure here. Bad mistake from Tiafo. Again, you're going to the HP Tour player who's right on top of the net, who's an accomplished doubles player, so clearly he has some good hands up there. You could lob it, you go back at Melikar, who's on the baseline, find the right matchup and then attack it. Just don't hit a shot to hit a shot. Have some purpose behind it. Again, again, Tiafo trying to go after Maroc. Little smile between the boys. Francis, I think, taking a, a shot-making approach to this match. But Luke makes the good point that got one of the best doubles players, a couple of them on this court. They're not going to miss those kind of balls.
That's three volleys away for the net player. And you can see this team is really set up to win the attacking game. Big serve, big volley, big, I mean, just look at the combination. These points are going really fast in the first two or three shots. So if you're good at the point of contact, you're going to win a lot. Finally got one to work, did Tiafo. But Luke, you'd like to see Francis up at the net here. All right, Malikar, the Americans, they'll be asked to serve to, to stay in it once first again set. in this first set. Some fun mixed doubles happening. Number two seeds, Malakar, Maroc. They're up 6-5 on serve in the first. Court five here, part of a series of three courts. Actually, in, in the first couple of years of the redevelopment of the National Tennis Center, you can see the grandstand just behind that, just next to Arthur Ashe Stadium. New practice courts with a grandstand on the backside of these. So many changes here. And, Flushing changes for the better for this event. Love 15. Did Tiafo hit that right into the ground in he, front of him? I think he did. <laughs> we had a bad camera angle on it, but. <laughs> Tried it. Yep. Straight down. Little trouble spot when you look at the scoreboard here for the Americans, 15-30. Only a Seagway serve at 5-6. 15-40. Great stuff there from Morak. Couple set points. The team that is beating the two individuals. You know what I mean? It, it's two people playing as one team combining with the right shots at the right time. Whereas Tiafo, he was a little sloppy on that first point. Love 50, you know, it's just things getting unraveled. And there's the set, first so 7-5 seven seven to Melikar and Maroc. Some good tennis, some entertaining stuff, but the seeds, they're out in front after one set played here. This is a first round mixed doubles match. Interesting, as we went into our break there, we were listening to Melikar and Maroc talk about the X's and O's. We got the mid-match stats. It's two stories in one. How are you executing Marat those stats, right? We can look at the numbers, but these two really engaged as to what is their plan. Yeah, nice second serve there from Murak. 38 years old. He's another one of these 30-somethings on both the tours that's extended their careers with fitness. 
care of body, schedule management. And to me, it's, it's the mind dictates everything. When you're mature, you understand how your body works, what your nutritional uh, approach is, you keep evolving. You just got to make sure the machine keeps working because you don't get, you know, less of a tennis player or less of a tennis player's mind. You gain more experience. And that's why on every level, doubles players, you got so Daniel Nestor, what is he, like a vampire? He's like, what is he, like 44, 45, 45. 45 and still winning out here. I mean, he's about to age out of the senior stuff, and he's still on the main tour. And to me, you see these players all over the place on both tours. It's because you get smarter, you get more relaxed under pressure, you understand the, the youngsters. You know, it's there's just a lot of things overwhelming when you're when you're playing on these global tours, and it never ends. This is a 365, 24/7 job, taking care of your body, your mind. And improving your game. I mean, think about it. I mean, Rogers, Leighton Hewitt's still playing. Yes. And he's dubs. got like replacement Hewitt. body parts. He's got like <laughs> new this and that, but he's still out there. He loves the game. And still can hang. Yeah. Really, Leighton can. 40 love. Well, and that's why I think you made such a, a great point, an astute point about Asigwe, and you could apply it too to Tiafo. And really to Melikar, who started to play top-level doubles now at 25. She's got, what, maybe 10 more years in her career, if not longer. Forty fifteen. Oh, that's just Marcy massive. Gray, and it's tricky because it wasn't just sitting there. It's kind of low and off to the side, a little awkward. One game all. And it's going to be second very set. interesting how this second set plays out because, you know, right now, if you're if you're behind, you've got to start, like, getting it going. And it starts with Tiafo like, getting the team pumped up. Stop looking to the stands and joking with your buddies. Like, let's engage. They've played good tennis, both of them, Segway and Tiafo. 7-5 that first set. Had a break early. You do wonder if the number two seeds start to pull away here. Well, this is the part of the rotation where they're, they're at their best because you've got the better server in Melikar and then you got the 16 year old coming up saying, okay, you know, it's a good serve, but clearly they can take over. Look what they did at the end of the first set. Didn't move her feet on that high ball. Played a nice point up until then. That Malakar serve, you can see why she's had the double success that she has had. Booming. Combination, big serve, big volley. Teamwork, everybody knows their role for that point. If you're at the net, you're the offensive element. You're there to put balls away. You're here to intercept things. For the server, Malakar is just there throwing the heat. Like, set it up with a big serve. I think one of the secrets is this second serve. I think she's very good with the second serve. She'll double fault some, but it's based on going for it. Okay. And that reminds me <laughs> a lot of the Puig. Remember the Monica Puig comparison? You know, really putting the pedal of the metal. And here's the set, the cross court, and then lines this up, boom. This put away where she set up, rotation, and there's nothing anyone can do with that. Just a weapon. Still game point here.
Well, they called out the play, but Deuce. double fault. You mentioned, Luke, that there'd be a few of them. There's been three tonight for Melikar and Marak, and now this is the deciding point. It'll be Melikar serving at a Segway. I'd go down the line. If, if I'm Tiafo, I'm directing my partner to go down the line here. Nope, she goes cross court and she misses it. Little doubt. I just thought that stroke had a little doubt in it. Early going, set two. Some mixed doubles here. Malakar, Marat, they're up a set. 7-5. Well, you can see the crowd gathered here. Again, a beautiful evening in New York, but this is just outside our Thrash Arena where Roger, or excuse me, Rafael Nadal is locked in a four-set battle. He's actually got set points, or excuse me, match points right now. Tonight, Venus and Serena Williams, they're due on court. Well, in just a few minutes, they're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Big crowd gathered. Some of those people joining us on court five for some mixed dubs. 15 long. All right, this is the challenge right here for the young Americans. A good hold here. They can start opening up a little bit more confidence, but this is kind of interesting territory for them. 15 on. Another good doubles play right at your opponent. It just makes a big difference when you have an opponent that's so predictable when they never come forward and volley the second one. Your return doesn't have to be low, doesn't have to be close to the net court. You have to navigate Tiafo, who doesn't look, look interested in poaching or moving. If the ball comes to him, he'll play it. But it's just like Tiafo's playing his side, his partner's playing the other side, and they're just playing the doubles court as two individuals out there and there's no real thought about crossing and moving and poaching and faking. Well, there's an eye formation. There was a plan right there, okay. But if you're never going to come forward at behind the serve, the return is fairly safe and straightforward. Yeah, and a couple now double faults here from a Segway in this game. Remember, this was the troubles at the end of the first set. This is who was broken. Nice stuff there. And Melikar really has come into her own. Not that we haven't seen good tennis from everyone, but she's really stepped it up and now will break 3-1 for the number two seeds. You can download the US Open app for all the latest scores, stats, match highlights, player news, celebrity sightings, and more. Luke's on the US Open app right now, checking scores around the grounds. It's available in the App Store and Google Play, or just head to usopen.org. The app, new and improved this year. My phone is glued to my hand, for better or worse. And now that strategy from Melikar and Marak is just paying off. All the little things coming together. They're starting to put some breathing room between themselves and the American duo. That second serve. That's an enforcer. I mean, for for him to take a 7-5-3-1, 30-love, he's going, okay, I'm going to open it up. I mean, you're just playing the situation. Now, if he was down love 30 and was on serve, I promise you that would not be the same same deal. Yay. 
Yeah, really opening it up now. Marak with an ace. Number six of the match for the team, and they've really got full control of this. 7-5-4-1. Danger zone here for Francis Tiafo with Whitney Estigue. Set now in 1-4 down. Gonna need some more plays like that. Nice volley from Estigue. Right up the middle. A little bit of a road back here, though, for this team. Fifteen on. Oliver Marac was part of the number one doubles team in the men's draw. They were upset in the first round. Marac and Mate Pavic. Nice stuff from Asigwe. Really like to see her develop that part of her game because it's naturally, instinctively good at the net. And again, it's not necessarily that she can't volley technically. It's the transition. Again, if you're not going to worry about like the serve and volley, if you're not going to worry thinking about the return and come in, you're missing a huge segment of the sport. That you're, I mean, once you get there, like you said, she's been explosive this entire match. But it's taking the short ball, it's the split step, it's the nuance, covering the line, looking for the cross court. All of this kind of no man's land that you have to master as you move forward in this sport. Or you become one dimensional and very predictable. Well, essentially, you'd be like a golfer working on their drives and their putting. Well, what about your short game? Because you can have a great drive and you can be really good on the green, but you've got to make sure that you can chip away. You're in building that the complete game. player. Yeah. That's that's what you want to do. Complete players have options. You want to be a Swiss Army knife of tactical approach. You're like the MacGyver out there. If you need to change up the speed, the spin. Whitney MacGyver Osigwe. Yeah. Maybe one day. Here's a deciding point. Tiafo serving up Maroc. What a point, the most entertaining point of the match. And the players who weren't hitting the ball were like moving and shifting and looking to intercept. It was fantastic. Great doubles there. Both Malakar and Asigwe trying to make moves there. Finally, Whitney did poach one of those balls. Perfect stroke there, Marak threading the needle. 5-1 now. And guess whose serve it is? Melikar. She's been the best server tonight. Challenge there, that ball called in. And it's interesting, we talked about this at the beginning, but both Melikar and Maroc, they're out of the doubles events. That ball was out, Chase Review confirms. So Luke made this mention. This is some livelihood they're playing for, and they've obviously shown that tonight. Well, they were feisty at the beginning. Remember the rain delay? A little salty. Yeah. No, no. 
<laughs> Tried to be cutesy. Yeah, she's just been so good all night off that serve. And now we've got a couple match points here in this match. Wow, brilliant stuff from Nicole Melikar, and that's it for the number two seeds. Melikar alongside Oliver Maroc. A nice doubles encounter, but they come through the number two seeds into round two. Seven, five, six, one in one hour and four minutes over the American duo, Whitney Asigwe and Francis Tiafo. It was close at the beginning, but the number two seeds, they pulled away in the New York evening. <laughs>